Hey guys, Omar here, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a Fuji X-T3. This is great for lazy people who don't want to read the manual. Quick shout out to B&H. Thank you for hooking us up with the Fuji X-T3 so we could play with it. Now, the way I set up this tutorial is how I would set the camera up if I just took it out of the box. What are the things that I would change first? So we're not going to go through all the menu options. There's a lot of videos. I'll link one up below that's an hour and a half and is amazing. And it shows you how to really work the camera. But the way I work is how would I set the camera up quickly in 15 minutes and go out and shoot? And that's how you're going to learn and have fun with the camera anyway, going out and shooting with it. But there are many options and there's, this is a very powerful camera, but this will at least get you started. Disclaimer, don't listen to me. Don't listen to any YouTubers, by the way. Take what you can, all the little nuggets from this video that work for you. What I do may not work for you. Also, check the comments below. We have an awesome community on this channel because we're all about helping. So check out to see people's suggestions on how they set up their X-T3. You ready? Let's go. All right, so the first thing you want to do is pick your language. I know English. Okay, after you pick your language, the first thing you'll notice is, you hear that? So the first thing I do is go to sound setup, and I want to get rid of all my beeps. So the first beep I get rid of is the autofocus beep, so now there is no sound. Now the other sound that's annoying is if you're shooting with an electronic shutter, electronic shutter, the camera gives you a little bit, I don't know if you can hear that, let's hear. <laughs> that so that it gives you kind of like a fake shutter sound so we want to turn that off if we're ever shooting in an electronic shutter i like to have a silent mode so sound setup so the next thing i do is i get rid of the shutter sound oh you can pick different shutter sounds we want the shutter volume to be off so now if i'm shooting in an electronic shutter and you'll see a little es there then now it'll just be full silent Next, the next thing I do is I hit my Q menu and right now the camera is set up to shoot only a JPEG. I love the JPEGs that come out of the Fuji cameras, but I also like to have a raw uh, file as a backup. So here go to fine, oops, here <laughs> go to fine and switch that till you see raw F. So now I'm shooting in this L right here is I'm shooting in JPEG. So I get my beautiful JPEGs, but I also have a raw file. This is particularly good if you're going to be shooting any kind of black and white or sepia. Let's shoot in sepia. So let's say I shoot this picture here and I'm going to play that back. Now, if, if this is my JPEG, uh, you can't ever get the colors back. So if you're shooting raw on the computer, you can have your colors preserved. So I like to set that immediately. Ugh, let's get out of this. Okay, next, I set up my camera's function buttons. The beautiful thing about the Fuji X-T3 and most Fuji cameras is you can set up the buttons the way you want. Now, to set up the buttons, you just have to hold this display back button. Just hold that. And now I get to set up my buttons. So the first thing is the function button at the top, I have that set as my playback button. And the reason I have that set as my playback button is I like to have a right-handed setup. So if I take a photograph, now I just touch here and I can play back my image as opposed to having to reach over the camera, which sometimes shuts off the screen because of this little EVF uh, thingy mabub right there that shuts off the screen. So F1 is playback. Okay. Function two is the button on the front. For that, I like to have my face detection settings. So now if I touch the button in the front, I can decide what I want. If I want face detection to be active, that's my function button too. Now let's take care of the D-pad. By default, the up is your focus modes. To the right is your white balance. Down is what kind of mode, boost mode or performance mode. And left is your film simulations. Now the first one I always will change on a Fuji camera is the white balance. And the reason for this is in the past, I've accidentally, when holding the camera, I bump this right button and then hit to the right and sometimes even go to the right. And I was finding that, especially on my Fuji X-T20, I was getting strange color shifts because of how I was walking around and holding the camera. What I wanna do is change this up here. So let's change up my D-pad. So for up, I'll actually have my white balance be up because that's a less chance of being bumped. My left button I leave as my film simulation. 
my right button, what I like to do with the right button is actually pick the focus mode there. So now if I want to go between a zone and a single, which is I do what I do the most, it's just this right button. And the other thing that's great is if I accidentally bump this button or hold it down, if I just hold it down forever, it's not going to do anything like the white balance fiasco. And lastly, the down button. I don't really use, I'm, I'm pretty much always in performance boost mode anyway. So what I like to do is make my down button the same thing that it is on my Fuji X-T20, just for muscle memory, just to have the same sort of setup. So this may not work for you if you only have your Fuji X-T3. Okay, so my down button for me is my focus area. This is the same as my Fuji X-T20. So if I hit if I hit the down, just out of muscle memory, I get this setup. On the Fuji X-T3 though, you have the, the uh, joystick and the joystick does the same thing as this down button. All right, I'm gonna set my back button focus. So that's the AEL button. That's the one I like for AF on. So that is AF on there. So now this is my back button focus, but I do need to turn this shutter focus off. So to do that, I'm just going to go to button dial settings and I'm going to go to the shutter, AF shutter, and I want uh, them both off. Okay. Now you can, by the way, you can specialize what you want. You know, uh, one cool thing about when you do street photography is it's actually easier to hold the camera and half hold shoot. So sometimes what I've been doing lately, I used to have both of these off. But now what I do is I have AFC off and I have AFS on. And what that does is if I switch my little, um, you know, focus mode, you see it's on single there. Now if, I, if I'm walking around with the camera to do street photography, I can half hold the shutter and shoot really fast, okay? Instead of holding it and fumbling between the two. However, if I switch the little switch on the front to AFC, well, now the shutter focus doesn't work anymore. And I could use continuous focus and then shoot. And even better than that is if I flip it to manual focus, well, of course the shutter focus doesn't work, but this one will always work. So I find that I go between AFS if I want the shutter to work really quickly, that's great for street photography or quick grabs, or if you're handing the camera over to someone, just put it in AFS and then they half hold. And then I switch it to manual focus if I want to use my back button focus technique. Yeah. Okay, so now I have this as my back button focus. This button's not doing anything right now. So what I want to do is, this is a little specialized, but when I shoot with flash, I like to uh, have this setup right here. Let's get to the button. And the setup that I use when I shoot with flash is this one right here, preview exposure white balance in manual mode. Now what that means is I'm gonna set my camera right now to manual mode, take, take it off all the A's, okay? So here's my shutter. So let's say I'm shooting with flash. When you shoot with flash, I like to be a stop or two below ambient. So that means this is a normal exposure. When I'm going to shoot with flash, I like to do maybe something like this and then fill in the rest of the exposure with flash. However, I can't see my subject or that's kind of a pain. So if I hit this button, I get what's called, well, what I call night mode. It turns off the preview. Now, if you take a picture and I'm going to hit playback with my new button, you notice that the picture's underexposed. Okay, so if I hit this again, it will turn part of it off and now it's back to being on. So now whatever I do, I will get a preview of. So when I'm shooting flash, this button gets pushed so that I'm, I don't see what the exposure actually is doing. Okay, next, the Fuji X-T3 has a touchscreen, but it's actually by default off. I don't know why that is. It's a little strange. Are they embarrassed? They're embarrassed about their touchscreen. By the way, the, what you just saw is me hitting the display back button. You can get different views. So this one is like your Tony Stark in the helmet view when you got all your info. This one gives you a little focus uh, checker on the right there. If you wanna see, you know, get really close and check out your focus. If you hit display back again, you get like a little bit of a normal view. And if you hit it again, all the information goes away. 
Okay, so let's uh, touch about talk about the touchscreen. Now, it's funny, Fuji did a little Sony thing here. You would think that the touchscreen would be under screen setup, but they actually call the screen buttons. So you actually, because you can customize certain um, swipes of the screen, which I'll show you in a second, but I wanna activate autofocus uh, touchscreen. So if you go to touchscreen setting, touch screen we want on. So now in the corner, you're gonna see all Fuji X-T20 and X-E3 style, a little AEF. So now what's cool is if my shutter, see my, my shutter won't focus, but my now my touch focus will work. So if I touch anything like this, the touch focus does work. Now, if you want touch focus off, you can touch the screen and it will turn it off so that way it doesn't do anything. Oh yeah, by the way, double tapping will give you also a focus check there. Okay, now that I have the touch focus, uh, I'm gonna just talk about the touch swipey swipes. So these are new to me because the Fuji X-T20, which is the camera I use most, doesn't have the swipey that X-E3 does. Um, and it is a little strange. So right now I'm just playing around with it. I don't use this too much, but here are some of the ideas I have. And in the comments below, tell me how you set up your swipey swipes. So by default, this one right here is the large indicator mode. So if I swipe to the right, it makes your indicators big. I think that's a little silly. If you swipe up, you get a histogram. I think that's okay. If you swipe down, you get a little level, which is great because I always shoot crooked. And left gives you, if you want sports finder mode, which um, is uh, shooting you know, high frame rate and also cropping in a little bit. This is how I set it up. So let's do this. Let's hold down the display back button and I'm actually gonna go up and find these swipies. All right, so the right, the one I'm playing around with right now is playback. So I'm thinking it's cool instead of boom, taking a picture and hitting my little playback button on the right, I could take a picture and just swipe to the right and then I get a little picture there and I could check my focus and all that. So for right now, my playback is right. And what's cool is you can go through your photos anyway. So if I, I'll take a new picture so you could see, I'll take one with this. Uh, oh, our touch is off, please. Shot, uh, there it is. Okay, so bam. So let's pretend that's my picture. Boom, swipe to the right, check it out. And if I double click, it tell, whoa, what is that? it shows you where the camera tried to focus. If I double tap anywhere, it will always show you where the camera tried to focus, okay? Very cool, very cool. Whoop, so that's my playback for now. Next, I like that the electronic level is down. That one I do like. And for up, I you know up, what I'm thinking is cool to use for up. And again, let me know what you're thinking, but I think one that's really great for up is select custom setting. So what's great is if you hit your Q menu, which is I'll get to in a second, you basically have seven custom sort of setups that you can have for everything. But to get to them, sometimes see there's one that's already set up. That one is custom function seven, which is an eight gross film simulation. And there's a bunch of other stuff that you can change. If I go to this one, this is a classic Chrome one, yada, yada. However, hitting the Q menu, sometimes when you're in the Q menu, you're like all the way down here. And so to change your custom function, you have to go up and left and then turn this wheel. But I thought it was cool to go up and have your custom functions all set up, yo, huh? you like? So that way you can even use the touch screen and you can just really quickly go, bam, I'm going acros, yo and you can just really quickly go through them. Um, the touch is, is sometimes fast, sometimes clunky, depending on how good you are with it, but you can also use this really quick to get through you. So I'm using up as my custom function, right is my playback. You know, uh, just as an example, I'm gonna show you that you can just turn off, so you don't have to have something for everything. And so for left, I'm just gonna say, uh, Bam, you can go to the last one and say none. So at least left will be nothing. Okay, let's change our film simulation to Velvia. Oh, that's hot. All right, let's talk about the quick menu. So the quick menu can be customized for what you want. 
And this is like really, really personal. But I'll show you the ones that I have on there. But to change your quick menu, all you have to do is get out of the quick menu by half holding your shutter and just hold the cue and then you get this setup custom functions. And I'll show you one. So what you could do here is this is the stuff I like to see on here. So some of the Q menu stuff is to see what the settings are and some of the Q menu stuff is to change things. For example, this right here is the timer. It's on the Q menu because I need to sometimes use the timer if I wanna take a picture of my family. So that is to use the Q menu to change that setting. So if you find you're changing something often, like if you're using the timer often or face detection often, put it on the Q menu. But other things I change, for example, film simulation, I change it here, but I do like to have it on the Q menu to see what I have set. That's true for face detection, and that's true for my white balance, and that's true for my film simulation. White balance I change here. Let's say I have a custom white balance, but I like the Q menu to see what I have. So decide how you wanna use your Q menu. Mine is a at a glance, and things that I need to change. So here they are for me. If I go through the menus really quick, the other thing I like to change quickly is AFMF. I like to use all the focus points. So all the focus points now are available. You can see them here. Tap my uh, joystick button to go back to the middle. You could change uh, you can also change your focus point by using your thumb. Now, after you have your Q menu set up the way you want it, I'm not gonna set it up here because it would just make the video too long. You can start setting up your uh, custom functions. Custom functions are the looks that you want. So for example, if I want my highlights down, um, down one. By the way, uh, the dials are sort of backwards if you're coming from another system on Fuji. So for example, on Canon, if you wanna lower stuff, you go to the left, but if you, here on Fuji, if you go to the left, it actually goes up, which is kind of like a Nikon thing, jeez. So anyway, and I wanna lower my highlights and I wanna raise my shadows. I gotta think backwards here and I wanna raise my color and I want all of this to be, whoa, I want all of this to be part of the film simulation let's just say pro neg high. So this is a look I want. What you need to do is actually be in the Q, be in the quick menu. You need to get, ah, sorry. You need to get in the quick menu and then hold down the Q. And now you're given the option to save it as one of them. So you could say, you know what? I want it as this third one. Go to the top, hit the, um, it, it says save current settings. You can actually go in and change extra stuff if you want here. And then once you go back, it's gonna ask you, hey, you wanna check, you wanna set that? And you're like, yeah, totally, okay, let's do it. You hit okay, and now when you go to three, although we have our little swipey swipe, if you go to three, that now is your settings. And you could even check it here on your Q menu. You got everything that you set. So set what you like, and then while you're in the Q menu, hold down that Q, and then pick the one you wanna save, and either you have to go up here, like I told you, you have to go here and switch between them or use one of your swipey swipes. I think that's a cool option. Okay, so the other things I add is if I go to AF, MF, manual focus assist, I actually put um, focus peaking on and I go to red high. And if you're in manual focus now, you can actually get a little, um, whoa, sorry, cap. If I zoom in or even if I focus using the lens, here you get a red overlay that tells you what things are in focus. So I like to set my focus peaking, so you could change that there as well. That works when you're in manual focus. With AF, MF on, you can you know, auto focus using your shutter button, but if you half hold it down and grab your lens's manual focus ring, you could get focus peaking to show up, and that gives you a little bit more precision of focus. So that's AF, MF on, that's something I turn off sometimes and I think you're ready to shoot. All right, there you have it, guys. I hope that helped at least one person out there today. All right, I'll see you guys next time.